The following contains spoilers, so proceed with caution. No question. Hey guys at DC, I just saw the Batman and I loved it, but it had a mini love story arc with Catwoman and Pattinson is still Batman. Also, it is a noir film and dark in tone. Do you see this dividing fans? Thanks for answering my questions, Brenda Farrell. Brenda's asking if the Batman will be dividing fans. And that can't be talking about a certain movie called The Last Jedi, which did not divide fans whatsoever. But this Batman movie, it is. It's very dark. It does have, I mean, I don't know. I think that sexual tension has been there with Catwoman and Batman always. Mm-hmm. Uh, but what do you think? What do you think, Rob? Is this movie going to divide the fans of the Batman? I don't know about like a divide, like, you know, split in half divide, but I do think there is like a, a section of them that uh, that might not like it as much. And, you know, that that that's a part of like the kids part of it, about it right? Like, you know, it's like, you know, the fact that the kids can't really attach themselves to this movie as much because of how dark it is, because of how, you know, uh, deep it is in that way because you know when you talk about you know some of the dark knight movies there is some darkness there and it's very gritty and stuff like that but when you even when you look at something like the dark knight like you know the joker's very dark character but he's also very comedic there's i think the joker has in in that one movie him alone has like double the comedy i think that this this movie might have had in, in total like he's he has a, he has a lot for like you know younger kids to even like and as well as you know the dark idealism that you know uh um us older people will will attract themselves to because he's a fantastic version of the Joker. Um, so like, you know, I don't think it's going to be a heavy divide because it's a great movie and, you know, uh, simple as that, but the people that have been, you know, maybe uh, pining for like a lighter Batman, one that could like, you know, live in something like the MCU will probably uh, feel like, you know, like this movie is too far to the other side than what they want to see. Andrew. Uh, I think if if I'm reading Brenda's question right, yeah, it's about the the tone disparity, and you know, is this movie too dark for a love story? Like, does it make sense? Is it going to divide people because of that? Uh, no, I don't think it's too dark for a love story. Um, and and again, it wasn't even so much of a love story as it was. Bruce had this arc; he had to go from being vengeance to being Batman, and he had Riddler on one side and Catwoman on the other side, kind of pushing him in that direction. He just needed both of them. One of them, tough love, extremely tough love with bombs. And the other one being like, Hey, you know, you can be a better person. Uh, And they were, Catwoman was there for him. He was there for her. It was more of a partnership. I found that completed him than a love story, even though it ended with a big old smooch. Um, I, I don't think that, uh, we need to worry anymore about this whole idea of it's too dark for our kids. I mean, the last time we got a Batman movie that was really kid friendly was Batman and Robin. Right. I mean, if you look at the Nolan movies, not I, counting they, Lego Batman. Oh yeah, that's true. Not counting. Lego <laughs> Batman. But like you look at the Nolan movies, like they barely had merchandising tie-ins. If I remember, like you had to hunt to find a toy. Like I have a toy of Bane. I had to go to like four different toy stores to find that Bane. Um, I don't think there were any video game adaptations of those Nolan movies. Uh, it was it was not trying to sell you merchandise like Burton and Schumacher were. Uh, and so we just had these three adult movies and then we've kind of been riding that same train. But the thing with kids is if the older kids like something, the younger set will automatically want to experience it because they look up to the older kids like hey they think it's cool so we want to be part of that conversation so the smart thing to do like marvel does not pander to children even though they're owned by disney who has made a living off of pandering to children marvel does not say like hey kids here's a triple g rated feature about uh, iron man <laughs> no they just made a fun comic book movie that anybody can enjoy and an 18 year old can go watch it and then be like hey i'm gonna bring my seven-year-old sister because she's going to get a kick out of it because I do. The Batman movies are not really built to pander, especially because of the dark subject matter. So I don't think it's going to upset anyone or divide fans that it's as dark as it is. Scotty? Yeah, man. I was 
in agreement with most of what Rob just said and where like the only divide would be the kid kid friendly kind of stuff. And uh, I think the people who appreciate Batman for the depth of character and uh, the different types of Batmans we've seen, like for me, this franchise is a place where a Batman can live. That is like for people who are only fans of and really like not Batman with the Justice League, not even Batman who's like learning all this stuff from the Raza Ghoul and like the Bane twist and things like that in the Dark Knight kind of took me out of it. I'm I'm more like a purist with the Venom Bane and stuff and Arkham and I hope they lean that way. So it's a less bombastic Batman and I, I feel like it's a really good counter to the Zack Snyder stuff. But I feel like both of these Batman, like I feel they're very similar, very similar veins out of both of the Batmans. And for me, that's what kind of makes this movie masterpiece for what people say. You know, the overall, just all the tributes to previous movies, the music, the sound. This movie was too good. Too good. <laughs> it's just too good. Too it was like, enough is enough. I well think said. I think for for the uh high Disney Disney, I think. As dark as the movie was, it wasn't, it, it was never dark. It was what it was. And it, it was, I said, if you take Batman and the character, if you rename all the characters, I think you still have a a fantastic movie at the end of the day. I think it was just, it was like a fun story that kind of strung you along with some in, interesting characters that made you want to see more of. And it and the and it felt like with the script that it had a firm grasp on what it was. It was never like, oh, well, maybe we'll do. It. No, it always knew the next step. Like it was always a step ahead of you, right? Like it was like, well, we're doing this to get to there. We're doing this to get. It always knew what it was doing. It didn't feel like it was making anything up on the spot. It felt like a lot of time, a lot of care was put into to writing it and obviously directing it, but to telling the story. It felt like the story was it was laid out and it was stretched out and the to the runtime's point, I I don't like long movies, but this one just felt like I was in on it because I liked the way it took its time getting to where I needed to go. It didn't rush it. There was no jump cut. It was just there was only one cut that threw me off, and that was the we talked about the Andrew and Scotty when the bike when he's on the bat cycle and he drove off and it almost went to that guy in the dumpster and then it like cut quickly and I was like, what just <laughs> happened? What, who, did, who was that? That was somebody. You know, but it was it was small. I just I love the details. I love that it took its time doing what it needed to do instead of, you know, and it wasn't just taking its time for the sake of t- taking its time. It was taking its time for the setup, for the payoff, for the establishment, for everything. It just that's what it did. It just was like, here, here's what we're doing. Go enjoy it. You can go binge Stranger Things for eight hours. You're going to watch this for three hours. Sit back and relax. That's how we got it. And I love that. I just love that it didn't care. It just is like, this is what we're doing. You're either in or you're out. So, you know, I don't I don't like talking about the runtime too much, but I just, I did, I appreciated because there are movies that are, and I won't say what they are, Andrew and Rob, you both know, but there are movies that to me are just like, this is just long. <laughs> this one it it didn't feel just long. It just it felt like the story needed that much time to flesh out. Yeah, just to touch on that, if uh, if I could, real quick, um, the end and how everyone was saying it was slow. Like right after he cuts the high voltage and falls, and like it's a re- he's literally reborn out of the water, <laughs> and then is holding the torch, holding the light for it's all baptism the baptism by fire. Dude, it literally was. And the fact that the mayor's kid is the first one to reach up to him and even the mayor, or, sorry, yeah. the old mayor's kid and then the new mayor still doesn't know how to feel about Batman. And she's like, if this kid can trust him, like, what am I doing? You know, so it was beautiful. The pace slowed, but I, I loved where it went because yeah. there were so many Batman I- moments right there at the end. Even the way he's talking to Selena Kyle I- at the end. I felt like that's where it needed to slow at that point because it needed to have a moment. It needed that moment that you just said. It, it needed that. Like, we just went through this adrenaline rush. Slow it down. Let's relax. And let's have a good time. <laughs>